So this is one of the boldest undertakings uh, that NIH has ever tried to design and implement. It, when it's fully fleshed out and fully enrolled, uh, will include one million Americans as full participants in a long-term study of health and disease. All of those individuals will be asked uh, to sign up to make their electronic health records available in a secure system, uh, to wear wearable sensors like Fitbits and other things to keep track of what's happening to their body's performance, to fill out a lot of questionnaires about their personal health, and to give a blood sample for a variety of laboratory measures, including a complete DNA sequence of their genomes and to be participants, not just subjects. I think we should probably not use that word anymore in medical research because it has that unfortunate connotation of something's being done to you. These are gonna be participants, partners in an effort. They will get a lot of information back about themselves that may be quite interesting and somewhat useful in terms of their own medical care. And they will be part of this uh, amazing national adventure uh, that is going to shed probably more light on how to keep people healthy and how to manage chronic illness than almost anything we've ever done. Now, at the moment, this is in the, what we call the beta test phase. And there are 10 health provider organizations across the country that are involved in this and are funded to take part in it. Uh, currently this year, we're spending about $300 million on getting this all up and going. And that's a program that's going to go on for many years. They then reach out to their participants and invite them uh, to join up. Uh, a very careful consent process is involved in that. But we also want to make this available to anybody uh, in the United States. So there will be a direct volunteer opportunity for people to sign up. We're also reaching out to community health centers. We particularly want to enroll many people who traditionally have not been part of medical research. In fact, we'd like more than half of the one million participants to be of that kind of underrepresented group, which is pretty bold. So these are racial and ethnic minorities? Uh, racial and ethnic minorities, uh, socioeconomic status, uh, people who might not necessarily have been engaged in research, rural participants uh, who oftentimes don't get touched uh, by medical research opportunities. Uh, all of that together, look at those various groups. We want lots of those folks because we want to understand health disparities as well. Why has it been so difficult to recruit uh, those folks? I think many times it's just a matter of logistics and that the major medical centers that do research uh, don't happen to be close by uh, to where some of the people in the country live. Frankly, some uh, ethnic groups uh, are suspicious of medical research and maybe with good reason considering some of the experiences that have happened in the past. Uh, if you're doing a medical research project, reaching out to African Americans, almost always you've got to talk about Tuskegee and, and what happened there and how are we going to be sure that never, ever happens again. Mm -hmm. I think, though, because this All of Us program, and that's what it's called, All of Us, uh, aims to have as its team members the same diversity that it has in its participants, that gives a certain credibility about what this project's all about. So the beta's underway. We've already enrolled a few thousand people. Uh, we are kicking the tires. We want to be sure that all of the pieces work. There's a biobank at the Mayo Clinic that's prepared to take 32 million samples and store them in a carefully barcoded way so you can find the one you're looking for. Uh, there's a database plan and a security system that's as best as the world can provide because we want to be sure that this kind of system is not subject uh, to hacking, uh, which could be very unfortunate and might cause a lot of people to wonder if they want to take part. Eric Dishman, uh, who is the director, was hired by me from Intel uh, to run this. And man, does he know how to run a program. And uh, we've got a lot of people lined up in these 93 organizations uh, to try to be sure that everything is going in the right sequence. But we want to launch when it's ready and right. And we don't want to rush that if we are any, any concerns about whether the beta test is telling us we have some work to do. So before we go into this national launch, which you'll hear about in a big way when we get there, uh, it will take a few more months. Can children participate? At the moment, we are not starting with children, but we aim after the first year to start to enroll children. It's more complicated there in terms of consent and involvement of parents. We have a working group right now that's trying to be sure when we do that part that we do it right. Uh, but it will probably take another year before it's time to open up to kids.